I'm not to be disturbed. Your Majesty. That will be all, Blazon. As you would not visit me, I decided to visit you. Forgive my disarray. I, I, I was not expecting visitors. Evidently. <laughs> Please, at least come. Come, sit. You can tell me what has brought you from the palace. <clears throat> I saw the Duke of Wellington. He has refused to form a ministry and says I must send for Sir Robert Peel. As I thought he might. I don't want Sir Robert Peel. Lord M, how can you leave me to face this alone? Do you imagine that I want to leave you, ma'am? There's something more important here than my feelings or even yours. You are the queen of the greatest nation on earth, one that elects its government and abides by the rule of law. Now, I don't believe in much, as you know, but I do believe in the British Constitution in all its tattered glory, and nothing, not even my devotion to you, will stop me from upholding it. I see. Peel's not such a bad fellow, really. Just remember, if he suggests anything that you don't like the sound of, just ask him for a little time to consider, when in doubt, Always delay. And you will come for dinner tonight so I can tell you all about it? No, not tonight. Not until this matter is settled. And even then, I cannot be at the palace as much as I have been. Why not? I think if you were not my prime minister, you were still my friend. I think you must know why. A monarch cannot be seen to favor one political party. You must dine with Robert Peel. And he may ask you to make a few changes in the royal household. Harriet Sutherland and Emma Portman are both married to Whig ministers. He will probably want you to replace them with Tory ladies. But they are my friends. I would ask the same in his position. The Prime Minister must feel he has the confidence of his monarch. <laughs>